back, and we're joined by Dr. Harold Rode, one of our country's foremost experts on places like Iran and Turkey and the Middle East more generally. He was really the duty expert on these subjects in the Defense Department for decades. I had the privilege of working with him way back in the Reagan administration there, and he went on to bigger and better things, really serving our secretaries of defense um, in the net assessment business, among other things, as they grappled with this important and often very turbulent part of the world. And we're always pleased to be able to pick his brains about what's going on there. Harold Rode, welcome back to Securing America. Nice to be here, and I hope I live up to the introduction you just gave me. You definitely do. Harold, uh, we were talking a moment ago with Ken Timmerman about the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran and uh, the efforts of the Biden administration to remove them uh, in the pursuit of their Iran deal from the designated terrorist organization list of the United States. Um, You've just covered a story about how they're still very much in the terrorism business, uh, notably against uh, Israeli targets, but also others, including our own. Uh, Tell us what's been going on there and and what the Israelis have done to uh, uh, ferret it out. Well, given the uh, morass in Washington, the Israelis are on their own dealing with Iran. Uh, And uh, all I can say is that they... Uh, the Israelis got wind of an attack that uh, the IRGC was going to send one of its members, one of its people, that is the Iranian army, the IRGC, mm-hmm. first to kill, not first, to kill an Israeli diplomat in Istanbul, to kill an American general in Germany, and uh, some a journalist in France. Now, the Israelis got wind of it, and they sent the team to Iran to where this guy lived, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's in Tehran. And they filmed the the interrogation where he spilled the beans on everything. And uh, then the Israelis let him go and uh, released the, shall we say, the parts of the interrogation, the interview uh, that they thought would interest us all. And uh, what the Iranian government will handle him. That's uh, their business. Mm. And uh, so there's, and that's the IRGC. They're still yeah. involved in the terrorist business. Against right. us here. Uh, including against an American general uh, in Germany. And, and Harold, I, I got to say this is a testament to the Israelis' um, daring do that they would leave a guy who had seen and interacted with them in in place, intact, uh, and have confidence that they would be able to exfiltrate that uh, team, you know, essentially unscathed. It's, uh, it's amazing. And it, it brings me to the larger question, Harold, of this Iran deal. Um, any sign that this is now um, over the side, uh, as some in Israel have been suggesting, uh, or as far as you can tell, is the administration still... Um, determined to uh, do it, even if it means uh, saying that the uh, IRGC is no longer a terrorist organization? Well, let's say that especially the State Department there and is very good at at um, uh, finding a smokescreen, to find finding words to do whatever. And behind the scenes, they're going to do what they want, but it'll mm. appear uh, no. That, that it's not that way. And all I can say is that um, I do not trust, unfortunately, our government in, in, in Washington. I don't really understand why they really even want to deal with Iran. We have great allies in the Gulf that we've been ki- kicking in the shins. Are- Harold, speaking of the Saudis, I want to just ask you about a development that's taking place this week involving um well, a pilgrimage, if you will, by Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey, to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, They have been uh, adversaries, to say the least, for a long time, particularly over uh, this issue of the murder by the Saudis of Adnan Khashoggi, a so-called journalist, 
uh, in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul a couple of years ago. Um, what's the backstory to what's going on there and its implications, uh, perhaps for the region and perhaps for us? Look, Khashoggi was a uh, senior uh, operative, whatever, of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is an organization which hates America. It hates the Saudi government. The Saudis funded it originally, but in the Middle East, you go up, you go down. Today, I'm your best friend. Tomorrow, I'm ready to stick a knife in your back. Erdogan's mm -hmm. desperate for money. It needs, he, his economy is, un, is failing. He's trying to do whatever he possibly can to stay in power. That's why he tries a rapprochement with the Israelis and the Saudis. Uh, the fact that Erdogan, as you said, and you're right, is making a pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia. He's basically saying, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put the Muslim Brotherhood agenda in, because he's also a very important figure in the Muslim Brotherhood. They're, he mm -hmm. and Khashoggi were on the same team. So, right. uh, in Indeed, I think it's fair to say that the Turks have sort of become, once the Saudis cut them off, um, the principal state sponsor of the Brotherhood. They certainly have had all kinds of uh, help they've been providing to the Brotherhood's operations here in the United States, including in their huge mosque complex, uh, the Dianette, I think they yeah, call that, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is, uh, that, that is uh, you know, essentially a, a, an apparat for running ops against our country, is it not? Look, the bottom line is they know how to use our culture against us. They say nice words. They, uh, uh, they have ties and jackets. They smile. And in the Middle East, people know how to wait. It's not time. Have patience. Patience is extremely important. The reason that Erdogan went to Saudi Arabia and in the Middle East, who goes to whom matters. Mm -hmm. I come to visit you, Frank. You're the important guy. I'm the supplicant. Erdogan is the supplicant here. He's going to right. say he needs help. Harold, talk to me quickly about um, one other facet of what the Turks are up to. You mentioned uh, a rapprochement with the Israelis, perhaps compelled by his financial circumstance. And yet Erdogan has been one of the principal champions of the idea that the Temple Mount, a very holy site for both Christians and Jews, of course, um, must be really in Islamic hands exclusively. Um, inciting the Palestinians, aiding them, enabling them is part and parcel of what he's been up to for a long time. Is there any shift in his posture on the Temple Mount, especially at a time when there's been these uh, violent outbreaks there? Oh, I have no doubt that he and his, and, you know, his big support of the Brotherhood, Hamas is really a part of the Brotherhood, and you've got Hamas flags everywhere. Whether he has been specifically involved in these issues, I don't think it really matters. Why? Because they have been working for years with the people. They have their own places in Jerusalem where they teach their hatred, and they have they have taught people, and these people are all, you know, Erdogan can stop for the moment, but he already made, he's making it happen, he made it happen. He prepared the groundwork. The, and the, our problem is in America, since we don't have any concept of history, we have, oh, that's history, something that happened yesterday. Erdogan hasn't turned over a new leaf. He's desperate. He right. will do whatever is necessary. But his philosophy for his entire life has been the same. We hate the West. We hate the, the America's the head of the West. So we hate America the most. And, but I'll, I'll make nice to it. And Harold, when you look at that sort of track record, um, incitement is such an important piece of this. And I, I think we in the West, particularly here in the United States, don't fully appreciate it. Though, you know, we did enact uh, legislation that at least was designed to stop paying the uh, Palestinian Authority for engaging in it and, and otherwise uh, fomenting terrorism. But have we been turning a blind eye to what the Turks have been doing, um, as perhaps has the Israeli government uh, to some extent as well? You're right. We have been turning a blind eye. Uh, where does it say? I think somewhere in the Bible, there's none so blind as he, will not, he who will not see. 
And right. I can only tell you that from what I'm reading in, uh, in I'm going to call it behind the scenes, it's not secret, it's just in secret languages like Arabic, Turkish, and Persian, that, you know, we, uh, our, our senior officials haven't a clue about the culture. And they know mm-hmm. they're playing with us beautiful and we're falling into their hands. Um, and right. whether it's naively or intentionally, I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. But it's yeah. certainly anti-American in the long run. Yes. Well, Harold, this is one of the reasons we value um, both your scholarship as well as your Thank you, practical experience so much is you do have an intimate understanding of the nature of these cultures, uh, as well as the, the nuances of the languages you speak them all. And you have been, as a result of uh, all of that, uh, so invaluable uh, to successive you know, senior officials in our government and and certainly to this program. And we appreciate the chance to visit with you. We'll be watching closely what, excuse me, what is coming out of these various uh, uh, negotiations with Iran on the one hand, uh, between the Turks and the Saudis on the other, and not least uh, what's going on with the Israelis. As uh, it seems to me, this is a very volatile oh, moment yes. in the Middle East as elsewhere around the world. And it's vital that we understand, you know, who the players are, what their agendas are, and uh, what in particular we can do to try to shape events uh, to the better. Harold, we leave it at that. Thank you for your time today. Come back to us again soon. Next up, we'll speak with Bill Walton right after this.